So welcome at this presentation. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about what we're working at right now at, uh, at BIM Server and at the Netherlands Organization for Supplied Scientific Research. This is a little bit, um, it, this might be a little bit futuristic, uh, but it's a, it's a movement we're working on for a year or maybe two years right now. And uh, there's, there's some uh, pretty nice demos I would, I'd like to show you and uh, have some feedback on that. Um, it all started with a 2011-2012 research uh, where we came to the conclusion that there is no central BIM. There's no central data repository that holds all the data and everyone connects to. The building industry is a fragmented industry uh, and we don't work all together on one single model server. Um, this research even found that it was more effective to work in a network organization than all, everyone working on the same central server or central file. Um, th th there's a presentation on that, on, on this link, uh, but on a BIM server website under the uh, uh, scientific innovations, you can also find a link to the research paper. So this is where it all started. How can we make an, 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 an effective information exchange, effective data exchange in a network structure instead of in a one central data repository concept? So that's how we came up with the event-driven IT architecture. This is a picture from Microsoft um, where different processes or different servers, different online services, web services, um, send out events uh, to different data processes. So it's not really a workflow, uh, but it could be a workflow uh, that is generated on the fly. It's all different separated individual processes uh, and they all send messages to other processes um, when that message is applicable. So uh, in that architecture, there is no central server either. All the different processes can be different online services. It could be a BIM server could be a level of development checker, could be a, a, a floor case supplier or a staircase supplier uh, that does some um, online modeling. It could be a class detection service, could be a validation checker, could be a, a, a whatever. Uh, and all these services are uh, not really connected in a workflow, not really connected in a web service interface, in a, in a web service environment. Um, they're all uh, uh, separate individual services. You can upload a file to that service, uh, but that service can also be triggered from a different service with the events. This, you know, this sounds a little bit vague and abstract, so let's give an example. Um, this example uh, uses uh, the, the BIM views, a graphical user interface to connect to a, a BIM server. Um, we created a project it's an example project um, and at this moment we're clicking um, on the add service button and at this moment we get a list of all the local running services but also a list of uh, stable and known remote services we hope this list will grow we also have a, a lot of test services that are not mentioned in this list um, uh, and at the end i'll show you some of the initiatives we have to uh, to hope, hopefully stimulate a lot of these services. So at this moment there's a TNO BIM server that provides a furniture placer service uh, and this service will be triggered every time there's a new revision on uh, this example project that we just made on, on our own BIM server. So when you click add um, we can do some configuration. Yeah, you'll see some uh, uh, some information about the service. We have to pick a profile. At this moment, there's only one profile for this remote service. Uh, so the furniture placer only has one profile. Um, so I can select that. Uh, it, it could be possible that there's a public profile or a, um, a, a non-public profile. It could, it could be that there are more profiles. Um, the, the, the profile concept is introduced to give uh, service providers the ability uh, to provide free services or uh, commercially paid services um, and also the ability to fine-tune um, different uh, responses from the service. For example, the class detection service 
um, you might want to fine tune or, or um, tweak some preferences in the class detection service like margin or what kind of objects are being uh, uh, being uh, an an analyzed. Um, so when you make an account on the class detection service uh, and you log into that remote account in this view, you'll see your own profile with your own uh, uh, settings. Uh, and this also creates a, a, a business case for the remote services to actually make money with their services. So in this case, there's only one uh, remote profile and it's free. So I select that. <coughs> and then I have to uh, um, I have to uh, make uh, give the remote service some uh, some rights. So in this case, he can read my revision, and he can write a revision uh, back to a specific project. So I have to uh, I have to give a project here. I have to give the remote service uh, the the rights to uh, write a revision to a specific project. And after that, I can even add a model checker. And in this case, um, the model checker always passes because it's just a demo. So what I'm actually doing here is uh, on my own BIM server, I'm configuring an event that will be sent to uh, a remote service called the furniture placer. So the only thing I'm doing right now is configuring an event that will be sent every time I check in a new revision on my BIM server. When that event is sent, there will be a, an, an authorization, a token sent to the furniture placer. And with that token, um, the furniture placer service can read the revision I just checked in. It has to do that within half an hour because then the token expires. And the token gives also uh, the access rights to read a new revision into the example project, also within half an hour. Um, the event is only sent when the model that I check in uh, will pass this model checking uh, feature. In this case, it always passes. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when you, uh, when you want to uh, send an event to a CO2 lifecycle emission calculator, um, you can um, uh, you can say that uh, the, the model ha all the objects in the model have to be materialized. So every time you do a new check-in, the model checker checks if all objects are, have a material, and only when uh, the model check passes, the uh, token is sent out to the remote uh, service. So. Again, the only thing we just did was uh, configure uh, the, the, the event, the token that will be sent out every time uh, a new check-in is uh, made into our own BIM server. So let's do that. Let's do a check-in, uh, the Alpine slide you missed. Uh, it will be uploaded, it will be checked in. And immediately after check-in, uh, uh, the event is uh, sent out and the token is sent out, and the furniture placer responds uh, with a progress bar. Uh, so it responds, I've got your event, I'm working on something, and hold on for a minute. And after a couple of minutes, you can see on the revision step that the furniture placer has added some uh, new model, and you can see that the model has more objects than the original model. So let's download it, uh, download it as an IFC model, Open it in Solibri, and you can see that every IFC space in this uh, in this famous uh, model now has some furniture in there placed randomly, just like the remote server set, and it, it responds within a couple of minutes. Um, a little sidestep, as I said about the CO2 lifecycle calculator. Um, a CO2 lifecycle calculator doesn't return. IFC files, it returns a PDF or an Excel file or whatever. Um, so in the newest version of BIM Server, we also have the ability um, to, uh, to extend, to save extended data to revisions and to projects. Um, and in the configuration of the remote service, in this case, there's a level of development checker that returns an Excel file. Um, you have to uh, have to give the remote service the access rights to write extended data to our own BIM server. Um, and 
the administrator in this case um, can configure on the server settings what kind of data remote services can return to your BIM server. So to avoid that remote services just um, send a lot of trash or maybe viruses or whatever uh, on, the, on the server level, the server administrator has to allow you know, what kind of data types and what kind of um, uh, data standards are allowed to return to the server. So in this case for the LOD checker, we make a new uh, namespace and a new name and it's a text file. Um, so in this case, uh, when we configure the remote servers, uh, we give the remote service access rights to write extended data according to um, the, 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 the data schema we just configured. So let's run this one for example. Um, you don't have to check in a new model every time, you can also run it um, on request. So let's run the LOD on Excel without checking in a new model. Uh, you can see that uh, within a couple of minutes the Excel file returns and it's not placed on the revisions, but it's placed under the tab extended data. So it's according to the schema of the Excel to LOD with a mistyped S instead of D. And let's download it, you can see the results. So in this case, the level of development checker gives you uh, the number of triangles per square feet and the number of objects per space and the number of uh, properties per object and it does that without furniture and without proxy and it gives you a small insight in, into the characteristics of your model. So what happened? Um, a user checked in an IFC model, uh, the graphical user interface uh, communicated to the server, the model was stored into the database, the model was checked if the data was according to the model checker to the rule set, um, then the server sent out a notification, an event, a token uh, to the subscribed service. There's a new revision, here's an access token, do with it whatever you want. And in this case, uh, the remote servers, the, 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 the LOD checker and the furniture placer, uh, they got the model from the server, analyzed the model, sent back the results. The server checked if the result was valid, if it was an actual IFC model, if the remote service had uh, authorization to send it back, uh, if it was a, a, a valid uh, Excel file, etc. And then the server added the result to as a new revision or as extended data, and the graphical user interface made it able to view the, uh, the result. Uh, in this case, the remote services uh, were interact constantly interacting with the server and the graphical user interface about uh, the status. Um, it, it doesn't have to do that because it's not a, a, a workflow connected server. It's just a BIM server just sends out a token and then it stops. And when the remote server sends something back, that's a nice to have and you can show it in the log. Um, but it doesn't have to do that. It doesn't even have to send back results. It, remote servers can also send the uh, Excel sheet from the level of development checker, for example, to your email. It doesn't have to send it back to the server. So it's an event-driven system um, that doesn't have to be a response, so it's not a fixed workflow. Um, so the bigger picture is that um, results can trigger um, other remote services again. So when an LOD uh, Excel sheet comes back, that could be a trigger for another service again. Uh, or for example, when class detection results come back as BCF, that could trigger uh, another service because when there are no clashes, only then another remote service will be uh, running. And remote service can trigger uh, remote remote services. So the furniture placer on its turn can trigger another remote service that adds some extra furniture, does some extra analysis, and then sends back the results. So it's not a one-to-one -one connection between services, it's actually a network of interconnected event-driven services, which makes the bigger picture. Um, at this no moment, some Applications um, that work uh, with this principle that are in the making uh, obviously is our own BIM server because uh, BIM server is nothing more than a BIM data service 
we are actually doing experiments in that right now where we don't have one BIM server for a project, but every partner in the project has its own BIM server and they are, they are triggered every time um, uh, it is interesting for the other partners. So every partner has its own list of revisions uh, and there's not one central model repository that holds the truth, but everyone has its own BIM server and it's only think synchronized um, when the data is, uh, uh, is according to a specific model check. Uh, a, a video about this demonstration will be on our blog, on BIM server log, uh, hopefully pretty soon. There are class detection services in the making, CO2 lifecycle calculators, floor plan generators, um, uh, automatic uh, staircase modeling services. So, uh, for example, when an architect uploads a preliminary design to a BIM server, um, it, con it connects to a staircase modeling service and the, the preliminary uh, roughly modeled staircase is replaced uh, by a very detailed uh, staircase from the supplier, including in delivery times, costs, materials, etc. So this is this sounds like a very nice to have, um, and for staircases maybe that's all it is. But for floors or walls, windows, um, it it could bring all the knowledge from the suppliers into a very early design stage uh, from the, for the architects. And because it's all automated, it could be cost efficient. So this is the real innovation we're trying to achieve as a research institute. At this moment, as an Android app, uh, there are loggers anal analysis, validation checkers, furniture place. So you just saw it as a space invaders application that looks on uh, where piping um, comes into a specific space. Uh, there's a uh, 2D floor plan generator, a renderer, uh, and all these services are automatic and uh, event-driven on demand. Um, <clears throat> there's a pretty old demonstrator we made a couple of months ago that um, when you check in a model, the staircase supplier, floor, su floor supplier, and inner wall supplier uh, return their automated um, proposal of, uh, of their objects uh, within uh, within a couple of minutes. These are not placed into the same project, uh, so they're placed into a separate sub-project of the architect, so it doesn't override uh, his revision, but it only adds to the revision. Then the class detection services run, there's a check on the IFC quality, there's a CO2 lifecycle calculation, which is very rough, by the way, it's not a very detailed calculation. Um, then this uh, synchronization between the data source project members takes place and a client gets an updated spreadsheet in his Dropbox. And when you look at the numbers, uh, this is not a sequential uh, workflow. Uh, the events are triggered uh, after specific other events take place. Then, uh, as I promised a couple of minutes ago, um, at this moment, uh, we're working on the BIMFederation.com, which, which lists a couple of BIMC compliance services. Very simple, one upload, uh, you can connect to a lot of services. There's not a lot of uh, configuration and fine-tuning I just showed, uh, like there is in BIM server. There's only one-to-one -one feedback, no iterations or events. So all the uh, nice future possibilities I just told you and I just showed uh, are getting stripped, uh, because the goal is to explain that uh, you don't have to have one uh, one black box, one platform, one software that can do everything and has a lot of features. But it's really about connecting different niche applications um, and, and building an ecosystem uh, of niche applications that automatically interconnect to, it, to each other. This is planned for April 2014, but I can show you a couple of screenshots. At this moment, the BIM Federation looks like this. There's only two remote services in there, both of them are from us. Um, but there's a Dutch uh, architectural firm called Seep Architects uh, that made a, 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 a property analyzer for IFC and that will probably be in there. Uh, and all the different um, remote services I just showed you in the list, some of them will be public and will be uh, available for free and they will be listed in here. 
So when you log in, you have the ability to upload an IFC model. So no project creation, no configuration of, uh, of services, uh, just simple upload. Uh, select the remote services you want to have triggered. Uh, the model is checked in and you'll get a result. Uh, in this case, the uh, uh, level of detail analysis and after a while also the furniture place and you can download the results. So this uh, won't trigger another service again. Uh, it's just a simple uh, simple concept to show that it is possible to connect to automated remote services. So limitations, yes there are limitations, um, but you don't need your own server to test it, you don't have to install BIM server. And our goal is really to explain the concept, have the ecosystem grow, and give a podium to remote service providers. Uh, and when you want to have advanced use, advanced use, uh, BIM server is there, is there uh, and it's also free. You just have to be a little more clever to install it. So to round up, um, to have this federation, federated BIM concept, um, so the remote services can be closed source and ask money for their specific features. It's based on a public subscribe principle. It can be on more than one topic. So you can have multiple stair, uh, staircase suppliers. Um, it is a centralized system for the service provider because the, the staircase supplier only has one uh, server that he has to maintain. So not a lot of tools and, and updates. Uh, only his one server that runs on his own facility maybe. Uh, only that one service has to be maintained. And uh, it is available to all different uh, BIM service suppliers uh, out there in the ecosystem. So we think this creates a new market for niche applications. Um, it brings BIM to the web. And because of um, creating niche applications that are very simple and easy to, to connect to, this, this will take advantage of the fragmented nature of the industry instead of trying to fight it by making one central repository and one big black box that uh, hopefully can do anything because um, we stopped believing in one black box that can do anything. Obviously, uh, for this open approach and for this automated interconnection of different services, it's crucial to standardize the API. So that's why we're very interested in the BIMC API initiative from Building Smart US. Um, and the latest version of BIM server is also compliant with this API. So that was it. Um, see, I've taken a bit more time than I anticipated. Uh, thanks for listening and uh, hopefully I'll see you on the support forum building some of these remote services connecting to, um, to the ecosystem. Thanks for listening.